Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. What's your name, brother? My name is Steve. Steve? Okay, Steve. Nice looking young couple. Good, 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 good. Here's, here's what I, I want to help it's you with 10 something. 10 and 14. 10 and 14? Read that. Job chapter, go. Oh, Job chapter 10 and verse 14. Job, listen real quick, sister. Listen. If I sin, then thou markest me. So what you don't realize is, hearing God's laws, you're now marked to keep them. Meaning, there's now crosshairs on you from God. Did you know every time somebody dies, you know who does it? Do you know? Do you know? Oh, because we blame, we say the devil does it. No. God is over everything, life and death. Let's prove that. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32 and 29? 29. 39? 39. One of the two. Find me. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And verse 39, Real. see now that I, even I, am he, and there's no God with me. So there's no God with God. He's not ruling in duality with anybody, right? Go ahead. I kill. What does God do? I kill. What does God do? I kill. Uh -huh. And I make a lie. Uh -huh. I wound and I heal. So if anybody ever got shot with a straight bullet, that wasn't an accident. You know? God says he wounds. It's him. He has his angels in the earth making sure whatever his will is gets carried out to perfection. That's right. So right now, you heard God's laws, right? You heard the law that a woman shouldn't wear what? Very good. You weren't here when that came out. But according to God's laws, a woman should not wear pants. You understand that, brother? A woman? I, I Listen, brothers, I know brothers like seeing women in tight pants. Like, boy, bro, bro, look at that thing, bro. Nah, guess what? What they're doing is they're causing brothers to lust after them. And when that spirit of lust jump on a brother, that's how rape happens. That's how molestation happens. That's how all kind of sexual acts happen outside of marriage. You agree, sister? Because brothers have probably groped on you that you didn't want them to, right? That's what happens. This is what we're, this is what we're out here to teach our people. We can stop that if we just change our mind and change ourselves according to God's laws. That's what we got to do. Read that. Do I, uh, what, what I had you holding? So Job 10 says, Thou markest me when thou sinnest. So y'all heard the laws of God. So now God is sitting back. When you get your outfit ready for tomorrow, he's looking when you thumbing through that closet. He's watching. He said, okay. Because remember, he kills, he wounds, he make alive. So the next time when you hear about that stray bullet or you dodge death in a car accident, things of that nature, you better know who's the who's the great and terrible God. That's right. That's what he's called, the great and terrible God. That's right. That's right. We give Satan far too much credit. Right. Satan tempts us. God is the executioner. Right. In all things. You understand that? So let me help y'all, because I was I've been helping the sisters and the children, so on and so forth, right? It's, it's all right. It's all right. When our children first heard this truth, they get they got restless too. But now they go to the school, they rejoice with the other kids, they play. They enjoy themselves, they go on outings, because that's what it's about. It's about nation building. That's and right. nation building starts with a family. Y'all right. understand that? Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. No. Hebrews no. chapter 13 and verse 4. No. Marriage is honorable. What is? Marriage is honorable. Now, I know y'all young, right? Steve said, wait, 22? 22. Steve is 22. Now, guess what? Hey, brother, I need you to move back a little bit, man. So, God says it's marriage that he honors. You won't find boyfriend and girlfriend anywhere in the Bible. Guess what? Boyfriend and girlfriend, you know what that does? It creates whoredom. Because the minute you get tired of each other, you say, man, I ain't stunned, huh? I'm going to find me another one by tonight. And what do you do? You make another single mother. And another single mother. Y'all understand that? That's what goes on. That's what goes on. 
we have to stop that cycle because according to the Bible, the marriageable age is 20 years old. Right. What we do is we say, oh, that's too young. They don't know themselves. There's more fish in the sea. When sisters tell their daughters there's more fish in the sea, you're actually encouraging your daughter to go out and be a whore. Right. You know, you realize that? Let me ask you a question. How many women should a man, should, how many men should a woman be with? Seven of them. I mean, I know. She said seven. seven. How, how do you say? It's how many you say? One. What do you say? Come here, sis. Come on. What do you say? Say one. Oh, okay. Seven is wrong. Should no, be one. Said, Let's. We're gonna come back to Hebrews 13. Let me forget that. Exodus 22, verse 16. Because you're gonna learn the laws of God today. And here's the thing. It has nothing to do with feelings. We're not dealing with an emotional movement here. We're not talking about how many shaman, how many We're not doing none of that stuff. Right. right? What we're going to do is give you, thus saith the Lord. Yes. Right? Read that. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. Oh and if a man entice a maid. Entice. You know, you say all the things she need to hear, right? You know, what's that? Game? That's right. Spit game. Spit game. game. Yeah. Telling her what is sweet nothing. What is what is it called? Give me some terms. Huh? This brother said pitch and woo. I ain't never heard that a day in my life. Let's say so you so you entice her. Whether you give her gifts, whether you take her, whatever the case may be, you entice her to like you and lay with you. You understand that? That's what that's what happens today, right? Read. That is not betrothed. Meaning she's not engaged to anybody else. That's what betrothal means. She's not promised to anybody else. Read. And lie with her, and you lay down with her. Steve, what does it mean to lay down with her? Have sex with her. So you entice her, like, hey, girl, I got you this, this necklace. I got you this ring. I got you whatever the case may be. Girl, I, I, I take you out on a date. Whatever, 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 right? Yeah. And she allows you to lay with her. So you guys have sex. What does the Bible say you must do? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. So that's the first man she laid with. What does God say she's supposed to be? His wife. You hear that, sister? Guess what? That ends the cycle of single parent house households. That ends that. Go ahead, sister. If you say, and I don't know if this is in the Bible, okay. but if you go like when, um, okay, when, was it Abraham sent Sarah in the tent and then they got, um, it was supposed to have got married when okay. he took her to the tent okay. and she became his wife. Okay. Is that the way y'all think? Well, that's that's what we just read. Oh, is that what you're It saying? says, if a man entice a maid and lay with her, have sex with her, they marry. he shall endow her to be his wife. Yeah. Meaning he must officially marry her. Yeah, okay. You understand that? Yeah. So there's no more, there should be no more jumping from man to man to man or a woman from woman to, or brother from woman to woman to woman. That would end all of the whoredom in our communities. That's right. right. That would help the black and Hispanic community. That's, That's right. If we learned about marriage. Right. But what we have is we ask sisters to come up here. Sister, are you married? No, I'm not. No. Listen, that's an epidemic in our communities. Right. And I told you, I'm a product of that. Is that like a curse? Because, our, because the men's going to go out and continue to mess with us. So, but how do you reverse it? Coming to y'all? Oh, uh, that's, I like that. Yeah. The sister said, how do you reverse it? You just learn one way, right? If you lay with a woman, what are you supposed to do? Huh? If you lay with her, what are you supposed to do? Marry. Marry. supposed to marry her so she said how do you reverse this the effects are single parent households the reverse is learning that you should be married right. so sometimes brothers and sisters come into the congregation their boyfriend and girlfriend we give them this understanding we break it down to them guess what their next move is they go down to the courthouse they get married that's what God says that's what we need to do and that would fix a lot of the issues in our communities. Right. You understand that? I'm gonna get you some. I'm gonna help you some more. First Kings eight. She looks confused. No, I'm like because if y'all follow the land, the, the laws of the land. land. Uh huh. And then y'all say you follow the Bible. You don't follow every law of the land. No. But because uh, with marriage, you follow you're following. Them. That's like following the laws okay. of the land. Okay. Now, marriage, here's what I want you to see. Marriage is the laws the of the land come from the laws of the Bible. That's right. Okay. Why? So. If you kill someone, will you go to jail? Yeah, Where did they get that from? The Bible. Now, oh, really? Right? If you steal something, where are you going? To jail, right? Where did they get that from? The Bible. Y'all understand that? So the laws of the land that we follow, we're good with them. 
Because we follow God's laws. That's what we follow, God's laws. And if we follow God's laws, we don't worry about the laws of the land. Because we're already doing it. The, the Romans chapter 13 says, obey the ordinances. God set them up. So guess what? We obey the laws of the land because God told us to already. You understand that, sis? Good, good, good. As long as the laws of the land don't go against the laws of God. That's right. Like, like same-sex marriage, that's against God. So no man up here is going to marry another man. Right. No woman is going to marry another woman. Right. Because that's against the laws of God. Right. Y'all understand that? Read. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. Yeah. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't finish Hebrews 13. Oh, right. Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. So listen, Steve. Marriage is honorable in all... Because why does God honor marriage? Because you're doing it according to what he said. If you lay with a sister, you should marry her. Build a righteous family. Keep God's commandments together. Teach your children that Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. Guess what? They'll grow up with very well uh, established self-esteem. They won't think of themselves lowly. They won't look like Greeks like this brother right here shaving his beard off. Right. When you look up the definition of a somebody give me that. Give me the give me the Zonda Vans. Kevin said the Bible don't say Jesus is black. I got it in my pad. Listen, I don't care what he says anymore. He's been scoffing all day. After the first and second admonition, reject. That's right. We just he took you know how many sisters he pulled away today that were hearing the word of God and they left. And you were here with one of them. I think you just had walked up. That's what he's been doing all day. He's the devil the Bible speaks of. Great. Beard, beard. Let's get the definition. He don't deal with the man, I'm telling you. Great. Beard. A badge of manly dignity. So, so why do all these men have their beards? First of all, it's God's laws. And it says it's a badge of manly dignity. Now, if you look, not everyone has the same type of big beard like this brother back here. But guess what? Some have a little bit. Whatever you have, let it grow. You're honoring God. Yeah, that's, if you got the, just that, brother, that's, let it grow. Let it grow. Don't cut it. Read. First Kings. I want to finish that definition. Come on, brother. Come up here. Beard. A badge of manly dignity. As a sign of mourning, it was the custom to pluck it out or cut it off. The Israelites, who? the Israelites. That's who we are. We're the children of Israel. Right. The children of the slave trade. You are the Israelites, right? right? Were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beards. It says the Israelites were forbidden to shave their beard. So what happened now? We got brothers that live, that live like Greeks and Egyptians. They shouldn't be shaving your beard off. I know Rick Ross made it cool. Everybody started rocking a beard because of Rick, because of Rose. But guess what? God made it cool. Yes. God gave that law to the children of Israel. And that's what we should be doing, keeping those laws. These are laws you're learning today. Hebrews 13 again. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. And marriage, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So when you're married, your bed can't be defiled as long as you don't do anything against the laws of God. Right. Like you can't bring a third person into your bed. That's against the laws of God. You can't bring an animal into your bed. That's against the laws of God. So as long as you're doing everything in the order of God, your bed can't be defiled. Whatever you and your husband do is between you and your husband. If you want to jump from a ceiling fan, part of a French, with your wife, guess what? That's what y'all want to do. That's not against the laws of God. The Bible tells us in, in, in Proverbs 5 to enjoy your wife, tell you to enjoy her bosom. We're supposed to enjoy our wives. Not wives with an S, but our wife. We only have one wife. Read. Marriage is honorable in all that, and the bed is undefiled. Well, what is God going to do? But whoremongers, whoremongers mean you jump from man to man or woman to woman. Whoremongers and adulterers, if you commit adultery, God will judge. God is going to judge you. So would that law help the black and Hispanic community? It would. That's right. It would. It would. It would be no more uh, single parent households. Right. It would no. It would be no more thoughts. Right. Thoughts wouldn't exist. Right. There would be no more late night. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, Side pieces and all of that. Late night meetup. Meet Jump off. Jump offs. You know, I'm, I'm old. Forgive me. But I'm losing these old slangs. The youngsters <laughs> laughing at me. But guess what? Those things would end. 
he grow up, he's growing up learning. The sister you, you prove and you get to know and you learn that's keeping God's commandments, that's a sister you would marry. Right. Have righteous children. Make your parents proud. Right. Nobody wants to, uh, 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 to have a, a, a child with a bunch of kids everywhere. Nobody can't be saying they're proud of that. We're not proud of that. So we gotta, we gotta, give me the, uh, uh, Romans 12 and 2. Here's my last scripture. I know I've been up here for a minute. Romans 12 and 2. Come on. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Because what does this world teach us? You could go from man to man. This world teaches us you go from woman to woman. That's what this world teaches us. But God says, don't be conformed to this world. Conform your minds to the Bible. God says marriage is honorable. We in the black and Hispanic community need to start honoring marriage. That's right. That's right. You know how we throw those big parties when, when Pookie get out of jail? Why don't we throw a big party when a brother and sister get married in righteousness? It's called a wedding feast. That's what's biblical. They Sometimes they have wedding feasts for seven days. Because it's something to be honored. There's honor. I remember there was an old saying back in the day. When a man wanted to marry a woman, he would say, I'm going to make an honest woman out of you. You ever heard that before? Why? Because there's honor. Shalom, brother. Shalom. There's honor in marriage. So he said, I'm going to make an honest woman out of you. I'm going to make you. I'm going to make this union honorable in the eyes of God. That's what we got to start doing. So there's some young brothers up here just like you. 20 years old, 22 years old, just like you. Guess what? What they do is they get their self together. The job that can provide for their wife when they get one have their own place. We help build men. That's we ain't building no right. manby, pamby, soft brothers. Right. Yes. Those are all filling the Christian church. We building real men of God That's That's right. that will learn how to take care of their family, right. learn how to hold a job, learn how to have a trade, right. have a craft, have right. their own business. Right. That's what we teach. And it's all in accordance with God's laws. That's That's right. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel. Yes, right. You are God's chosen people. Yes. That's, right. That's who we are. And your lineage will never change. Right. You may change your name from black to Negro to Latino to Hispanic, but the blood in your veins is always going to be the children of Israel. Yes, right. Read that again. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew? Steve, what does that mean, to renew? When you renew something, what are you doing? You said rebirth, okay. It says by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind, meaning make your mind brand new. Don't be like this world that teach boyfriend and girlfriend. Change your mindset to what God says. Renew your mind according to God. Read that last part again. But be ye transformed. Be ye what? Be ye transformed. So that's the changing process. Thank you, sister. I like that. This is said, man, get your behind out of here. Yeah. Sis, we've been telling them that all day. Hey, I want you to realize this. Remember we read about the beard? He wants Jesus to be white. He's not. Thank you, sister. The sister said, he wants Jesus to be white. And, and guess what? Against, even though the Bible says his skin is what? Like burnt brass burnt in a furnace. You can't get a white man from that. He made melanin for a reason. He made it the sun was closer to the earth at the time. And there's no man that's black. Listen, and I want, you, I want you to know something too. Give me, give me the map. Pull it, get the holiest one up right here. Do you know Israel? Israel, listen, sister, listen, 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 listen. Do you know Israel is actually a part of Africa? They built the Suez Canal in the late 1800s to cut Israel off from the northeasternmost part of Africa. It's literally so right here. Israel is right here. So it's so what they did. This map shows the cutoff point. They built the Suez Canal right there. That little red dot right there. They built the Suez Canal because that piece of land was originally attached to the top part of Egypt. Give me that in Matthew 2.15. So this map they're showing the cutoff already. Exactly, I know. Okay, right? But let's let's see. Let's see something. Read. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Come on. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord 
appeared to Joseph in a dream. So Joseph is Jesus' father, right? The angel appeared, listen sister, listen, listen. The angel appeared to Joseph, right? Appeared to Joseph, who was Jesus' father, read. In a dream, uh -huh, said, say, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. What color were the people in Egypt? Black. So if Jesus was white, would the king have a hard time sending his soldiers out to find a white baby? Bring it out. With white parents? Bring it out. He would have hid in Scandinavia if he was white. He would have hid in Russia if he was white. He would have hid in Poland if he was white. He would not go to the land of all dark faces to hide. That would be counterproductive. He had a white head, like he said. You see that thing? So now, why could they flee into Egypt so easily? Because the Suez Canal was not there. So they walked from Israel into the land of Egypt to hide among other black people. That's good. Makes sense, right? It makes perfect sense. So we've been learning laws today, so we understand the law of marriage, right? Okay. So for God to honor your union. What must you do? Get married. Now here's what. I know your parents gonna flip out. Y'all in college? No? You in the military. Oh man, sister. Listen, guess what? That is going to help you both in the future, especially learning this truth. It's gonna help you navigate through life. This truth is gonna save you from a lot of headaches. Right. A lot of headaches. Mistakes you're, you're, you're going to make by being on the world standards, you won't make by being in this truth. Right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.